Hello everybody, it's Rich C here from Sarissa Precision. Welcome, oh, yeah. and we have up in the top, Steve, down the bottom, we're joined by AJ today. Might be uh, on for a few weeks, we'll talk to him about that in a moment. And Gary, hello Gary. <laughs> I know you're a, a connection to the tonight. tonight, um, but we're going to kick off tonight with a question from a, 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 a chap earlier in the week about our processes in developing a, a project. Um, so without further ado, let's crack on with the miracle of bringing something from uh, an imagination sketch maybe through to the final product. Steve, where does it all begin? Uh, well, the, the, the actual little trigger for it can come from a, a random conversation, watching a film, uh, a TV program, anything walking about outside. There might just be something, a little feature on a building that you think, oh, that's really cool. And then you start thinking, what? how could we incorporate that into something? Uh, the other thing could just be games we're playing and, or, you know, and sort of the example we're going to talk about tonight is the, the new Smithy we did for the Bowers and Badger stuff, which really just came from the the mole uh, blacksmith figure that, that uh, Old Swan do. Uh, I got one of those, thought it was really cool, and we were talking about it saying, he really needs a Smithy somewhere to, <laughs> to do his stuff and work on. So Gary and I chatted about that. Uh, Obviously, there's a there's a sort of an aesthetic to the the range already, so it would have to fit in with that. We do a blacksmiths in the old West range as well, so there was sort of something there. So we we kind of thought that something a twist on that to make it fit within the current uh, Burrows and Badgers range would be would be the place to start. So from that conversation, and we have lots of those, don't we, Gary? We do. <laughs> so to, is that when it gets handed over to Gary then really at that point yeah lit, lit, it's <laughs> quite often what happens is that it goes silent after that and I end up going okay which one am I doing and most everything that we're working from um, is sketched as well now the reason I'm looking over there I'm going to switch camera because I've just grabbed the sketch and something else that's um, we're working on can't say much more about it but basically everything does come from really rough sketches um there sometimes is no point in doing pretty stuff so i will uh, switch cameras again because um that's actually hush hush i see steve's face very disappointing <laughs> 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 Don't show them. <laughs> but quite often you know that that sketch will then have another sketch and another iteration a, a few more rough sketches and you could see on that one there was a few dimensions there as well so get an idea of what it would look like um and then i'll go into cad uh into 3d straight away uh work out a few things and then throw that back at steve and uh steve will have a look and either go yeah nay can we make it bigger he'll take the gaming perspective um and then once he's worked out in 3d at the moment um i'm quite fancying throwing out some spin throughs and fly arounds just to get a better feel for it yeah um, and for some people to have a look but i mean that's where that's where sometimes the little animations we show off are done because you, you look at some still screen grabs and it doesn't quite give you a feel for it but when you spin it round and maybe put an existing kit in with it you get that idea of size and scale and it really yeah it, that, it, that it, it, you know right away because it's quite common for us to get something that looks awesome on screen yeah and then you you get one and you it's it's way bigger than you imagine it to be even though you know what size it is because it's all measured and it's been done to a size but when you actually get it in front of you physically it's really big or it's maybe a bit smaller than you think and you know so then you get that there's nothing wrong with it maybe scale wise but it's just that perception and the way it, it yeah, looks sometimes it can be a, a tweak of here a millimeter here or whatever just to write with because yeah. no one figure scale i mean i've got 
three or four different makers of figures behind me and one is really chunky and one is really really precise and minute and what we do has to work with all of those so that you can use what we're doing with multiples of scales and then steve throws in the words door <laughs> <laughs> ah. yes and i'd imagine that being as it's a mole and uh <laughs> yeah so, human here it's yeah yeah for, the, for the, these figures you know and even normal doors we make them wider fatter shorter thinner to to work with games that might be played with it for the bases yeah. and you know moles are <laughs> So this, yeah, is, I mean, if you do 3D, yeah, it's still 3D. It's not actually a physical item at this point. No, no. I mean, it, it, the thing with doors, doors are really funny because if you do doors at scale, if you actually think about, it, if you stand in a, a normal, you know, modern house that's been built to uh, building regulations and stand sideways in a door, there's not a lot of room either side of you, but you're not standing on a six foot wide piece of wood yeah you know, that has to fit through and the bases really throw off that scale and make doors sometimes look really small and in reality they're actually there's nothing wrong with them they're perfectly scaled but they just don't look right Mind you, if you look at a lot of the original buildings doors from the early century uh 19th century 18th 19th 20th century the doors are small yeah <laughs> They're built well, five foot high people. <laughs> You're ducking to get in, aren't you? But yeah. Also, also, <laughs> you know, Gary and I have been in, uh, to the the living museum down at where is it? Come on, Gary, tell me. Yes, and they, there's, they've got period houses there, um, and some of the doors are only two feet high. The doorway into the room is two feet high. You've got to duck under and virtually crawl in, and a lot of that's because there was no chimneys in them. They would have just air gaps. So they they had low doors to stop the smoke traveling between certain it would keep the it would keep the smoke up high and it let it go back out where it was supposed to go. Yeah. Um, and you know, staircases, everyone asks about staircases. Staircases are quite a modern thing. Yeah. You, know, you might get them in really old houses, but on the whole they would have been added a lot later. And they're narrow and they're very steep. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how does AJ come into this then? Because we're, so far it's bounced between you, Steve, and Gary, uh, and it's in a 3D sort of mix. Well, I, I threw um, a jiggery poker because you can, you can throw a 2D drawing out of CAD quite simply, but because of the number of components we end up using and the moving around, um, I actually, old, old lag, go back to an old way of creating 2Ds. I create the 2D. Um, I'll either lay it out on the sheets and then I'll throw it at AJ or I'll sort of roughly lay it out because this productionization that AJ does and testing as well without instructions or anything. Uh, it can be a nightmare sometimes, but... <laughs> so he takes it from me then? Yeah, which then, yeah, Gary will send it over. I'll get it in 2D. I'll look at it generally, productionize it. I'll, put, I'll join some pieces together where they can share lines to take some lines off the time. I'll look where I can tag pieces, which is generally the stronger bits of a, um, a component, because obviously when you pop it out or scalpel it, you don't want the piece breaking or taking off etch detail. And then we'll cut it, see timing. Sometimes we can, I might look at it again and go, oh, no, that doesn't work there. Or when we popped it out, it might break or Gary could get it and pop it out and say, the tag just needs to move there. And that's how we go from my end of it i'll send it over to gary then which he will do the first so, test generally so you you've done a cut at that point and that you've got a physical sheet yeah there'll be a physical sheet with it all tagged in which yeah. then we will send to gary i will generally have one two at the same time so we build them simultaneously yeah and then we'll go off that and we feed back to each other where we think things it might be the design might have to change slightly or like say where tag is and just yeah that's where we'll go from there when we're talking about tags we're talking about what holds the, it into the uh, sprues onto the board whilst the yeah it holds it holds the it components onto the screws. see if there was one line here I, don't know, I, I did have some i think i've broke them all though i did have some <laughs> around me somewhere i think i've got rid hold on i've got stuff I've got, i think i've got bits i've got bits here so your little tags will be I don't know if you can see them actually on here. There's little bits that will just be where they hold components into the sprue. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's what the tags are. <laughs> 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 the screws, the screws the, yeah. When do these tags? I mean, I've got it upside down there. When when do these um, these uh, tabs, if we call them tabs, tabs yeah. they get added into the design? That'll be from day as soon as Gary does it. Literally. Yeah. So a lot of the sketches I do at the beginning. Sorry, Steve. A lot of the sketches yeah. done at the beginning are not just for what the thing will look like. I'm working through the assembly of it as well. So it's a very um, involved process very early on because you know, you, you'll need to understand the size of it, the scale of it, the how it assembles to then create it in, in 3D because you could end up with tags that, you know, you're in various places. And so while I'm designing it, I'm not so much drawing it in CAD from the sketch. I'm actually designing physically how it goes together. And that's where AJ will pick it up. And when he does his trial build in parallel with mine, I'm looking in terms of doing the instructions, how it paints, how you can pull it apart and paint it in parts um, for those that do it that way. Whereas AJ is looking at the intuitive way of picking up a sheet, identifying parts, because he'll often have just a screen grab. And so then, not even that. <laughs> yeah, quite often, not even that. It's no it make something. <laughs> Makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, uh, that's where it, things get found out at that point, AJ, um, yeah. whether a, a tab that locks it together with the two walls together is actually in the correct place. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it could be even like the tags I put onto something, they could be clashing a bit, which will push it out, the components. So a lot of time, we'll move it out of the way a tag. So yeah, it won't uh, affect the product's build. And obviously with me building it without instructions, I can sometimes see Gary's instructions might say one way. I build it another and go, actually, Gary, it's, some, it's easier. What do you think to this way, the way I've done it? Uh, so that then gets that second thing. Yeah, we linked up with the instructions that way, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's um, the tags are funny because when we, you know, in, in all the guides and that, we talk about it. We talk about just giving them a rub off with some memory. Mm -hmm. But when we build the kits, we build the kits to test them. We don't take them off because no, if, do we that, take, yeah. we take, if we don't take them off, we can really easily see if there are any issues with it because if it could be if someone forgets to take rub a little tag off somewhere it could cause a problem that means something doesn't fit and then if they've not done it and not realized they've not done it they have an issue uh, so we we make sure the kits go together without doing that um but but we would you know we would take clean them off and we do them properly so really little bits isn't it that whole yeah you know, a, tag, a tag could be a, you could have a couple of tags that affect one piece and between two of them, it could be enough to push something 0.2 millimeters. And when you've got a tolerance on the MDF of 0.1, maybe on the thickness of it, it could just be enough that something moves 0.3. And it just, and then when you've got that, if that happens twice at two ends or something, you can have a exponentially flash. Yeah, because it just adds up. And it sounds like nothing. You think, oh, 0.2 of a millimeter. Um, but, you know, 2.2s is a 0.4. You're nearly at half a mil. And that's enough to to cause an issue so we build them to to ignore that yeah adam you yeah. says the matador went together really well thank you very well designed so thanks uh thanks adam <laughs> that's good to know that's good yeah so, so, from, so from that point then uh aj you're um building it without instructions and that yeah. lights potentially some ways that are different to what gary's kind of experienced in his yeah. world uh, and we refine the uh, instructions from that correct gary yeah so while aj's doing his test builds which are basically testing the design and the assembly process but also it's for manufacturing processing and when you receive it process it processes so that it doesn't break i'm building it for the pretty bit for painting it a la the, the forge um, and also I'm double checking my concept of assembling it because remember I'm assembling it in 3D on CAD as a, a full construction and then I'm layering it up so that I can see how it goes and then 
when I'm building it, I'm putting it that into another program and pulling it apart to create the instructions to see how it goes together. And then AJ will be on the phone or an email going, have you thought of taking part 10 and putting it where part four is? Because yeah. if you do that, I don't have to do this. Um, quite often it's like, yeah, okay, so I'll then go back into CAD, relayer it, do what I'm doing in the other software as well, yeah. <laughs> and, and just shift the instructions around a bit and change stuff. And I know at the end of the day, uh, all this effort, I think uh, that everybody out in the community, we're, we're getting good feedback here. Um, it, it's uh, helping us to build it without having to have three hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to hold four or five bits in one go to be able to glue the last bit in. It, it's, it's I mean, it yeah. does everything. I, I have no patience, so it needs to be Robert, a pretty good Robert, build and easy Robert to do. Band. Yeah, no rubber bands, no, no, bit, none of that. No, no not that. Uh, bulldog clips, nothing. No. <laughs> At the moment, I'm waiting on um, another kit which has gone through the test build thing and the timing test. It's way out on timing. I've redesigned it already. It's yet to even hit AJ because I need to now do a test on the, another build of it for AJ to then get to, to test build that. I'm also then waiting on, I think there's another 15, 16 kids kits. Which reflect AJ kids. From last week yes. with yeah. uh, Captain Corelli. But <laughs> it, it, it has that. And then there's another five or six kits which AJ says he's dealt with. <laughs> and they're on their way to me. I don't have time to muck about with all this plastic bands and yeah, you know, it, it as per in the book. I do use them, but I don't want to be holding things and waiting for two. Yeah, we don't want to rely on them, do you? You know, no. it's, it's just something that you can do to hold it while you do something else. Yeah, yeah. Not, you have to do it with these. You know, you don't. And I think I mentioned in the book that. I'm a bit of an old old lag like, when it comes to model making. I did do the the Bismarck, and half of it didn't appear on the model because it was a too fiddly, too small, and nobody will notice that. But, you know, it's not there. You know, when I finished it, like AJ sometimes gets frustrated. I set light to it in the garden. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those three fifty models. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. half the bits on there. Yeah. Now we've got to talk of ships. Uh, Paul, I'm sorry if I say your last name wrong, Sushan or Sushan. Uh, uh, Roman warship, best MDF he's ever built, ever bought and built. So, thank you, Paul. Um, yep. And uh, I think uh, Mark Warner uh, just saying uh, it's got our paint tray. It's brilliant. Thumbs up. So, thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Really? So, yeah, AJ, you, you've, um, you've built it, you've passed all the feedback what happens then gary will generally do a rev version of the kit or i can sometimes fix it depends how big of a change it is if i fix it i'll fire it over to gary with the pieces outline that i've changed and talk him through it or if he's going to do it i'll speak to him and he'll do it he'll get in touch with me and say he's a rev version of that file i'll bring it in and we'll do a, a final build on it generally then before it gets sent down to production ready to cut to go out to the customers we are going to sail. So. To, uh, with Steve yes. to uh, get it all out the door. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I mean, I think at, at all stages, everyone's involved. You know, yeah. we, we do bounce stuff around. Uh, well, when, yes. when, we get, when we get those right renders coming in and uh, of something new, uh, some, people, lot, some yeah. people can get quite excited about some of them. Steve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, think, I think that's and part of our... The family motto isn't it just get involved and uh you know everybody pitches in where we can yeah uh, hopefully that gives us a superb result that we are happy ourselves to build and paint and, you know yeah. Yeah. before it even gets out to the public yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah absolutely uh the, um steve just an example because we do do uh, commissions for people if this is sort of process that is followed for those commissions as well isn't it yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we've done a, we, we've done a number, a number of things for people. We can, uh, we can design uh, from scratch. We do a full design and production, um, everything packet. You know, we do, we do the whole lot. 
uh, and it's something we do quite a lot of and you know there'll be kit there's quite a lot of kits out there boxes and things that have got our stuff in them yeah um, and it's it, the same the process is the same the difference uh, the difference a lot of the time with that is that we are there's obviously a uh a sort of sign off to happen at some point um communication so, sign up, yeah. uh, communication and uh but and sometimes the timelines on that can be very very condensed you know there's there's, there's occasions where um we've we've turned stuff around in a, a matter of days quite quite big projects and being cut in big quantity of kits um within 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 two or three days a, a week of having a conversation um similar to the boroughs and badgers uh <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, the, the yeah. smithy was something as well. That that happened, you know, within a that happened on a Monday to Friday. It was sort of an idea on a Monday and finished on the Friday. So, yeah, we, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, I'm saying there's a couple. What's that? We've got a couple of questions there. I'm seeing one. Uh, Gary, do you ever break out the cardboard to mock up? Um, yeah. No, because I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> 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 I, even as a design student i would always hit a lathe i would hit a machine because the, the precision <laughs> I, I would get the saws and the angles out and i would make the model with a machine because doing it by hand i just get so frustrated i'm just not yeah so you know it, no no <laughs> you've got you've got a little card cutter though and things so you've done some little card components but again that's the machine cutting little yeah exactly I, I, uh, a long time ago um i did some hugamont and um whatever models that and i designed it for a fold a card cutting folding thingy but yes it was still machine <laughs> work because <laughs> i can't cut two two straight lines together yeah but, when, you know. when two pieces of card are together because one will do that on me <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm sure uh, aj will agree with uh, adam dues as well when it comes to working with the card and the pieces just a dab of soup glue is that what oh yeah doing, AJ? <laughs> yeah especially with card card bonds anything with a dab of soup glue like that <laughs> yes you know, you've got to, I, yeah. I, yeah you've got to be careful putting card things on get it lined up quite neatly before you super glue that on so, yeah sometimes it can be and it, and it goes like concrete as well so it's oh, really yeah. good to it's really good for some of the smaller components is just to be just to run a bead of super glue and let it soak in once you've got it in place and it will just it'll go like concrete um and also for the doors the carved doors we've got if they've got carved doors you can pop them through and then open close have them mm. half open and then super glue just run the super glue and let it soak into the the fold and it'll it'll strengthen yeah. that and it'll stick hold it in place so yeah See, I mean, doing that we don't it it seems to help strengthen doesn't it a lot of those like for example uh there was a japanese castle a lot of the uh ramp work and things like that and just a touch of super glue was all that's needed just to yeah. reinforce it was rock solid it's yeah. brutal if you don't take it is isn't it aj yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. don't take care with it it's brutal because it's like yeah oh man i really do have to cut a piece now because i really <laughs> <booked> that <laughs> i get that's where i before i throw because i've got a big bucket of um sheets here with holes in i'll keep the card part frame uh, you know the, the outline the outer, yeah because if i do muck it up and it's not too fine I use that as the template to draw one round yeah because otherwise i just know <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much guys i mean that's i uh, hopefully everybody's been able to that's watched now but can also re-watch this later on a facebook page um hopefully they'll be able to yeah, yeah, well, there's one question we need yeah. to cover because, uh it, it got asked um terence asked it last week after we did the stream so we can't miss it this week because he, he got in there a week early he was asking about what our next project was well i was going to come to that yeah <laughs> all right yeah so i was going to say we we, we sort of talked about the the next sort of releases would be the the mediterranean sort of italian um captain corelli's mandolin as uh, gary put it um, this yeah. hands upon our mediterranean releases uh, back in march isn't it the yeah. uh, the the yes. farm areas the walls all that 
area. But now we're talking about going into a, a township, yeah? Yeah, town, small villages, you know, where you've got a bit more, it's a bit more built up. Um, Multi-story. Yeah, and that's... that's sorry. A, sorry, that's quite a few kits and quite a bit of... Um, quite a bit of variation. There's different roof styles. The you know there's different uh, upper floors and things. So you've got houses with balconies, houses without things like that. So there's okay. a there you go. There's one. There's one. That's one of many, isn't it? Yeah, that's just one. one <laughs> nice one, Gary. Cheers. Yeah. yeah that, that's our next that, project. Yes. So that's that's something that's that's really quite quite close to happening at the moment. Uh, as far as new stuff that's just or new stuff i think the we've got some a new selection of old west which we're just test going to be test cutting it'll be going to oh, gary's we speak probably, probably. probably weekend. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be done yeah. any day now we've got some stuff to test cut and that's an, an expansion on the old west it's a little bit something a little bit different from what's there um so that's that's something new and then beyond that Oh, there's loads. I've just there's a few, there's a few little individual kits we've got from the book that are imminent for release, yeah. isn't it? As well, so well, they've got four ranges behind them that will come not too far in the distance yeah. in the future, too. Yeah, so there's that. So, we're, we're going to eat into that 500 list that you've got already ready. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably grown now to like 800, knowing Gary. <laughs> well, I've just got, I've got this, I've just, just spotted, I've got this sitting on my desk here, so I'll hold it up. So, this is. Compound one from the Alamo Kickstarter backers. They are all sitting there, packed downstairs, uh, ready to go out along with uh, most of the compound twos. In fact, I think by tomorrow, all the compound twos will be packed as well. So anyone that ordered, uh, anyone that backed it and wanted a compound, uh, they will be on their way, all of them, on their way tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, so, we, we have got to say that we're still working with uh, split shifts and uh, yeah working under COVID conditions, obviously. Um, so uh, more challenges, easily overcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got Tom, like challenge. Tom's, Tom's here tonight. He's on He's on late tonight, Tom. He's working away downstairs. I don't know if you can hear the, you might hear the extraction. That's what that little, that whining isn't me. Yeah. It's actually a fan. <laughs> uh, the extraction systems. All right, guys, thank you. Um, thank you very much for going through and enlightening us all. Uh, with the process from beginning to end uh, and of course uh, the, the next project coming up uh, being the Greek islands and uh, Italy and Mediterranean Captain it's a, it's, that's what the soldiers are by the way for photographs yeah. so that's <laughs> what we're today uh, so. <laughs> um, look forward to lots of little sneak tip bits um, yeah. and in fact uh, we have just started putting up the terrain tile videos that people ask for um, that Gary's been hastily working his way through, showing everybody how to, uh, on previous questions, how to lay those out. So keep an eye on YouTube. Um, and we'll see you all next Thursday. Thank yes. you very much. Stay safe, guys. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.